Psalms chapter 72. A psalm for Solomon. Not Solomon's psalm. But this is for. This is a song for Solomon by David. Give the king thy judgments, O God. So he's praying to God for his son who's going to be king. Judgments. That's what a king is supposed to do. He's supposed to judge. And thy righteousness unto the king's son. David's still king. If you remember, Solomon was crowned king while David was still alive. Because uh, uh, I think Abiathar uh, overserped his office. David was old in age and age and getting on. And so it was time to, to anoint Solomon the king. He shall judge thy people with righteousness. And that's what kind of judgment that we do not have in America. We are not a Christian nation. Matter of fact, we spoke away from the Christian nation. We chose a president to be in rebellion against England, but England had it right. They had a king. You only see a president in Babylon. Get that. There are three presidents, and they're in the book of Daniel. Daniel was, was one of them, and they were Babylonian offices. God's office is a king. The king is the judge in righteousness and thy poor with judgment. You are not to oppress the poor. You are not to tax them up crazy. By the way, which Solomon does end up doing in the end, ends up taxing the whole nation. And then when his son Rehoboam steps on, steps on the throne, he, he threatens more taxes. You're to, you're to properly uh, deal with the poor and help them. And when Jesus' time come, they weren't, they weren't doing that as a nation. The mountain shall bring peace to the people. And Solomon does have peace in his reign. Until he starts sinning with outlandish women. But during the whole time that he is king, there is peace in the land. They were able to build the temple. He was able to build all his homes. And he had built up a mighty military. America is semi-peace right now. And she's tearing down her military. So if a war would come now, we would be absolutely unprepared. And the little hills by righteousness. The whole land was to be done by God and by righteousness. What is right? What is holy? That was what the land was supposed to be. It was supposed to be that beacon on the hill, the light, for all the nations to come and know about God. And they failed. He shall judge the poor of the people. Help them. They're being oppressed. People are taking advantage of them. He shall save the children of the needy. Those that have needs, you're supposed to meet, you're supposed to help. Now, it's not a government welfare. It's the nation of Israel taking care of their own. Listen, the church is supposed to take care of their own people today. It is not supposed to be on welfare and social security. But oh, how far we gone from the Bible. And shall break in pieces the oppressor. Those people that are oppressed and those people that are against the poor and against the needy, the king is to pronounce judgment against them. Listen, the oppressor in America today goes up to the Senate and to the House and the President and makes little private deals and, and doodads and gets all kinds of rewards while those that are needy and poor don't get... Listen, everyone, in, in, everyone on Capitol Hill is going to be judged by God, by the Word of God, on what they are supposed to do and what they are not doing. You will be judged. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure. Well, there are no king in Israel today. And there hasn't been. In a long time. Now as far as the sun and moon endure, Peter says it's all going to melt away and go. And when we set up that millennium, when we set up the eternal new earth, Jesus Christ will sit as king, not Solomon. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. You need rain for grass to grow. The mown grass is used for animals to eat as showers that water the earth. 
A shower is a nice, gentle kind of watering of crops. It's not a big overflow of rain to wash away the topsoil. It's pleasant in what's needed. In his days shall the righteous flourish. The nation shall grow in it dead. Until he sought the land's women and the gods of the heathen. Listen, they found gold in the streets of Jerusalem that, and silver that just as much as the rocks. An abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. There's no peace there today. Jerusalem means city of peace. It's anything but today for rejecting what God told and rejecting the Messiah. There is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth, the Jordan River. And he did. David and Solomon are the only ones that had the true reign of the land that they were to have. After that, they started giving away. People started fighting and rebelling against the nation. And they started losing land like they're doing today, giving it up for peace that's not peace. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him. I would assume non-Jews. Or those that are Jews are in the wilderness. The wilderness that they went through to get into the land. And his enemy shall lick the dust. That's the serpent. God likens the enemies of the Jews to the serpent. And his curse that he'll lick the dust. Genesis 3. You better not be an adversary of the Jew. If you are, God will liken you as a nation to Satan. Then let me ask you a question. If you go against the Jew and God likens you to the serpent of Genesis chapter 3, you think as a nation you're going to be saved? What, a saved devil? I don't think so. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall bring presents. And they do. Queen of Sheba came and brought presents. And the kings of Sheba... And Seba shall offer gifts. Again, the Queen of Sheba came and brought him, I, I believe it said, uh, spices that were just excellent. Listen, caravans would come to Jerusalem and go through Jerusalem, trading goods and, and buying goods. Read, I mean, it says one time that Solomon would bring peacocks and, uh, I think, apes. He would send out a navy of ships and bring gold and all kinds of things. David is a prophet. Because this has not happened. As, as, as when, this is, when this psalm is written, this has not happened, and it does happen. So David's a prophet, he's a king, and he did go into the priest's office. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. The Bible says he was the most knowledgeable, most wise of all. They came down and bowed before him. All nations shall serve him. He went to Hiram and got, got the trees he needed. They brought the trees down by float so they can build. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth. And the needy will cry unto God. And you also can take these pronouns not only for Solomon... Well, you can take them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is going to take care of the needy. All the nations are going to fall down and worship Jesus Christ eventually. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, the Bible says. Well, they ain't going to bow before man. They ain't going to bow before Satan. Even Satan himself is going to bow before Jesus. If you're needy and you have a cause, you go to the Lord. You cry unto him. You don't go crying to the government. The poor also, and him that has no helper. And Jesus said, you know, take my yoke. Give up your yoke. Take his yoke. Turn to the Lord if no one will help you. He shall spare the poor and the needy. 
and shall save the souls of the needy. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Save the souls. Solomon can't save the soul. And those that are oppressed, the rich, they ain't going to get too far. You find in the law it states you're to take care of the widow and the fatherless. And that's exactly what they did not do. That's happening today. The fatherless and the widows are, are, are listen, the ones that are doing right, proper. I don't mean fatherless by some girl getting shacked up by every guy in, in the town. I'm talking about a woman who has children, was married, and, and the husband died. I'm talking about that fatherless. They need help. What the woman to do in the Bible is she has young boys who are not grown and her husband dies. And listen, she don't go out and get a job. And the law, and when Paul writes to Timmy, Timothy, he says, with far as the widow, if she's got family, you're to take care of her. By the way, you read what Timothy said. That widow has conditions and cloth. You don't take care of just any widow. If she ain't serving God, and she ain't in the Bible, and she's not witnessing, she's not doing what God told her to do, then you are not obligated to take care of her. Number one thing is she ought to be saved. You say, well, if I got somebody in my family is unsaved and all that. Read what Paul wrote to Timothy. Why rely on you when they don't want to trust the God that you love and honor? You better get the Bible and get the Bible down fast. There are conditions and causes. The Bible speaks more about uh, speaks so much about poor and needy people that need help. Honestly, not not because they're lazy, not because they're wicked. This because of conditions of life they cannot get ahead. There are homeless people here in Daytona Beach, and listen, they got a job and ain't enough. They go run down to a mission church. And they get fed and they get stuff like that. But they don't want to turn to God. Have you read what John 6 said? Jesus told the people, you didn't come to me because you want me. You came to me because you wanted the food. Read John chapter 6. When they came searching for Jesus for bread. And in the rest of the chapter, Jesus talks about him being the bread of life. And they rejected it. You help some people out, you may be helping their sins and not trusting the Lord and trusting in the help that you gave them. Better be very careful. You gotta have standards and you gotta have convictions and you gotta stick to them. The Bible says, For as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. So I'm gonna bring somebody in this house and take care of them when they don't want to serve the Lord, they don't want to go to church, they don't want to be part in the Bible. They don't want to go out and try to win souls. And I'll be called cruel and obnoxious by what I say. But there's a Bible standard. The king has to have that standard. The Lord, you think Jesus Christ is going to take care of a poor person who just wants to be lazy and wants people to take care of him and wants people to give him everything and not do nothing? I don't think so. Save the souls and the needy. Only Jesus can save the souls. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. Oh, that's not two good words. You mean that these widows, these poor people, and those that are needy have been deceived? No. That don't happen. And violence? Violence? Did you read what the woman went, uh, Elijah, Elijah? The creditors are going to come. They're going to take my son and my children. And they're they're going to force them to, to pay the debt. That's violence. Where Jesus told you a story where a guy owed a lot of money. 
He went to the person and said, listen, I ain't got it. And, and the guy with love and care says, I forgive you. The entire death. And precious shall their blood be in his sight. Now that's interesting, their blood. Did the violence bring murder? Why would blood be mentioned there with deceit and violence? I believe they were killed. Now, I can be wrong. But that's what I think. Because in his sight, even Solomon, well, why would the, why would Solomon, uh, the blood, why, why would they, unless it's a murder charge, why would you save that for Solomon? Didn't it say the king is a judge of righteousness? Your honor, sir, King Solomon, this woman here, she was murdered by these oppressors, by deceit and violence. How about that? That's the only way I can think of a murder, of a blood charge be brought before a king or before Jesus. What about this? You ever think about this with this thing here, murder? What if you cause somebody to, so much problems because of money and because of situations and problems in their life? What if you cause them to, to have ulcers, bleeding, bad heart, and eventually because of all the oppression you give them, they die of bad health? I think God will charge you with murder. You caused it. You better not oppress anybody. You better take care of them like you're supposed to take care of them. And he shall live. That's Solomon, and to him shall be shall be given the gold of Sheba. And the queen of Sheba came and brought gold in a great train. Prayer also shall be made for him continually. People are going to pray for him. You know, we are in a day and age in America that I know born again Christians. I doubt that though. They profess to be born again Christians, but their testimony, what they told me, I don't believe it. That they pray that our leader of our nation would be killed or dead. Christians. I pray for the soul of him and his Michelle and his two girls of his to be saved. I pray for my leader and not wicked prayers. I don't pray for him as a president. I don't pray for him the decision. Because listen, th th those prayers are not going to work. In order to have this president do right and be right, he needs to be born again, saved, first of all. And daily shall be, daily shall he be praised. So you can honor an official. You can say, yeah, look at the great ruler we have of our nation. Look at the great king we have. Listen, they did that for David. Don't you praise yourself. Let others praise you. Let God praise you. Don't you do it yourself. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. Now, I don't know if that's where it's grown. I don't think wheat is grown on top of mountains. But here's a place where it should not grow, and you got just a handful, enough, where it's not grown. What about where it is supposed to be grown? All purpose. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. Now, Lebanon is known for its trees, the cedars. And they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. How much grass is there out there? You know God likens the nation of Israel to grass? There's a lot. Sand on the sea? Boy, you can't even count that. The stars of the heaven. You know how many Jews there have been since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 tribes? You know how many? Been a lot. His name shall endure forever. Jesus Christ. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, even more. 
You know, also for Solomon, listen, people still know people know who Solomon's name is today. They know Solomon as king. We still read about him in the Bible. David's a prophet as a son, and men shall be blessed in him. In the Lord Jesus Christ, I am blessed by eternal salvation, that my sins are washed away, that I have I, I am a, a, a son of God, adopted by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have been redeemed. I am happy because of the Lord. All nations shall call him blessed. All nations? At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Maybe in every nation in the world, there's always been somebody, at least one person, who's done right. In Babylon, we know of four of them that did right. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel. See, that's the only God. Who only doeth wondrous things. He does great things. And blessed be his glorious name forever, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah. <coughs> and let the whole earth be filled with his glory, the millennium, the new earth. Amen and amen. It was proper to say amen. The prayers. The what? I thought this was a hymnal. It concludes the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Everything that David said has been a prayer. Of what? A prayer put to, to writing, put to song. David was so joyful in his heart for the Lord, he would sing his prayers. Have you ever done that? You ever sang, blessed be the name of the Lord in prayer and thankfulness and thanksgiving and glorifying God as so far as we've read in 72 chapters? Or are you too busy listening to that junk Christian music out there? Or even that, that worldly junk music? I've been telling you now for 72 chapters that this is your hymnal in your Bible. And it's also prayer. And these are not the kind of prayers you go and read them off before God. That's not how it is. You have written down before you the king of Israel, David, what he sung and what he said to the Lord. Everything we read is exactly what David said and did and wrote. That we may know the love of God through a fellow brethren that loved the Lord and God loved him. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. 
How great the Lord! How great the Lord! When Christ shall come with shout.